it just disappeared. I want you to notice this because there's something really interesting about this reverse. Why am I spending so much time on reversal? I think it's a great way to introduce non-determinism. And there's a really, really cool thing about reversing machines that I'll tell you when we're all done. And it relates to the fact that sometimes when you reverse machines, pieces get cut out. And, and we'll talk about that later. All right, so what about, th here's the machine all in reverse. Here's our start state. The only thing that's left to do is indicate the final state. The final state is a single place where the old initial start state used to be. Because that's where we started. Now we want to make, make sure we always end there. So that our last symbol becomes the first symbol of the old one. So and that's over here. So this was the old start state. So this new machine accepts strings where every single one has at least two zeros, not following it, but preceding it. Let's look at it and make sure. Well, if you go here, you get a bunch of zeros. How do you make sure that you get all the strings? Here's two zeros. Then there's a one. Can you get every single one? What about this one? Oops. Let's find a path in this machine that accepts 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Where do you want to start? It's not a good idea to start here. It won't work. But you got a choice. As long as there's one way to go in a non-deterministic machine, you're OK. And we considered all the different ways. And here it is, because in this machine, if you went forward on this, you would end up here. So when we go backwards, we start here. And we go, well, we've got two choices. Which way do you want to go? Stay there once, then go 0, 0, and then there is a 1. Do we go here? Uh-uh. Go back here, 0, 0, sorry, 0, 0, and then there's a 1, and then we're done. And if you look at it carefully and you make enough of, a, of an argument, you could write down a little English paragraph to explain why every single string that has at least two zeros before every 1 has a way to get through this machine and end up here. And in fact, there's no other strings that can ever end up here, because the only way to get to this final state is previous three symbols have to be the one before it has to be a one, and then zeros. And if you have zeros at the end, you can tag those on. That doesn't hurt. So you can prove or write down or explain why this machine really works. But it's a non-deterministic machine. Everyone agree? Because we went backwards. When you reverse arrows, you create non-determinism. It was true that you had to have only a 0 and a 1 coming out of the states, but when you reverse them, the zeros and 1s that come out end up being equivalent to the zeros and 1s that used to come in. And it's perfectly OK to have two zeros coming into a state. That's a deterministic machine. But when you reverse the arrows, it becomes a non-deterministic machine. What's more, these E transitions are non-deterministic by nature. So here we've got this very, very non-deterministic machine. And what I want to do to complete this example, and it'll be good practice, let's take this and turn it into a deterministic machine by the method we used yesterday, and then see if we can interpret it. And by mechanics of this reversal process, come up with a machine that actually solves the problem of everyone having two zeros preceding it, a problem that seemed hard at first. And then we'll just have it staring at us, and we'll try to figure out what it means. It's kind of cool. You come up with this machine, and then you can interpret it rather than having to come up with the idea first and write the machine. And this idea can get very, very deep, where you actually can come up with solutions to problems that you might not have been able to come up with on your own at all. And it's a very, very powerful tool. So the, the redundancy is still there, right, with how that we don't, like before we did the reversal, we didn't need one of those end states. It looks like we still don't need one of those end states. That's true. You can make this a smaller non-deterministic machine. But I should have mentioned also that there is no notion of a minimum non-deterministic machine as there is with a deterministic machine. With a deterministic machine, there really is a unique minimum. But for non-determinism, it's uh, I guess there might be many different ones that have the same minimum number of states. You don't have that unique one. All right. Yeah. With Doug. the non-deterministic uh -huh. machine, are we always only going to have 
one final position? Like yes. Got... Yes. Yes. Why is that? D Doug asked the question, if you do this reversal process, the reversed machine always has just one final state at the end. Why is that? It's because it corresponds to where you started in the initial machine, which is the initial state. Because there's, there's always only one initial state. So when you reverse it, the final state takes that place, and there's only one final state. I should mention, though, that when we convert this to a deterministic machine, that we're going to get more than one final state. So it's very easy. In fact, you can always make a deterministic machine, an, excuse me, you can always make a non-deterministic machine that has one final state. You can always take all the final states you normally have and have E transitions going to a single final state. Right? So it, there's never any reason to have more than one final state in a non-deterministic machine. But in a deterministic machine, insisting on one final state actually takes away power. That's a way to cut off half a brain of a finite state machine. Say you have only one initial state to start in, and you can only have one final state. That's not powerful enough to get all the strings that you need to get. And it's not, it's not at all obvious what subset of the finite state machines those kind of machines actually accept. It's if not obvious enough. To just have more intermediate states, could we still do the same thing? No. 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 L limiting the number of final states to one restricts the sets that you can accept. It's a subset of the regular sets. You can't get all of the sets you normally get. It's not, well, I, we're getting off track, but I could explain why in, in five minutes. And maybe if you remind me later this lecture, I'll get back to it. I, I could give you a, an example right off the bat, and you'd say, oh, yeah, for sure. Shai, is, is this machine over here on the right supposed to be a deterministic machine? It is supposed to be, yeah. OK, it says every one has at least two zeros following out. Right. Doesn't this only allow for a single one? I mean, you're going back to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, I misread it. Um, the, my other question was on the left. Uh, you have this dead state, and you're able to get out of the dead state. Yeah. Into the dead state. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> right. So it's like uh, a birthday. It's a birthday. Uh, it, there's no reason to draw it in. There's no way to get here at all. It, it, it's it's like a secret room in a cave, and there's no passages there. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's like that kid that got stuck in Purgatory Chasm yesterday. Nobody watches the news because it's so boring. <laughs> Are you in there? Yeah, I'm stuck. <laughs> All right, you guys need to do some work now. We have this non-deterministic machine, and I want to turn it into a deterministic machine. And when we do, we're going to stare at it and see if we can make sense out of what we've created, and then see, oh, that's how I should have done that preceding two zeros before the one. And hopefully it'll make sense, and we'll appreciate the neatness of this uh, reversal procedure. Before we do it, I just want to point out that what we did here in this particular machine for reversal was completely general. We could have done it on any machine. It didn't have to be just this machine. You can do the reverse of any machine. So this example is essentially a proof that regular sets are closed under reversal. Okay? By the way, there are much easier proofs of this when we get into other ways of describing regular sets. There are easier ways to see it. But this is one way, and it leads into this nice example. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's convert this to a deterministic machine by keeping track of what this non-deterministic machine is doing. We start in the same start symbol. And now we can see either a 0 or a 1. Where might this machine end up if the first symbol it sees is a 0? This machine is going to remember where this machine might end up after it sees a 0. Well, this machine might start here. Or it might start here. If it starts here and it sees a 0, it'll end up in state A. If it starts here and sees a 0, it'll end up in state D or state C. So on a 0, where might this machine be? In a possible one of any of the states in this set ACD. This machine is a finite state machine that's going to be deterministic. It's going to keep track exactly where the non-deterministic machine might be after reading any sequence of symbols. So after reading a 0, it's going to end up in either A, C, or D. And after seeing a 1, it's going to end up, well, here, 
If it started here, there's no one. And if it started here, that's interesting. 